Previously on Bottom Feeders. Wow, this might just be a wake up call. Gotta think about this job, I guess. Maybe I can get something I can tolerate. You gotta keep going. Not going forward, you're standing still. I'll do whatever it takes. It's always just gonna be as much, as much fishing as I can do. I might have some new help today. Business has definitely picked up a lot, and it's it's now turning to the point where it's it's getting a little stressful. Hold on, that's too much. Said... Forward, loop it. No. I think I found good help, and then they turn out to be no good. Right back to where I started. Carp, sheephead, buffalo, and suckers. For most Americans, these bottom feeders have no place in our lakes or on our plates. But there are fishermen who have found opportunity. For the self-employed, business is often about reaching for the sky, but settling for reality. But in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, fish market owner Jeff Ritter can't help dreaming big. This is our dried fish for the app. Ooh, this is some good stuff. I've got goals to keep growing a little bit every year. We're gonna do whatever it takes to keep those orders filled and keep going. It turned out wonderful, to be honest with you. This is Ron. Jeff's only full-time employee. Well, I don't know if it's not worth it, but it's, it's, uh... What do you mean you don't know it's not worth it? We know it. Every smoker full here right now, three, four hundred bucks. Yeah, but we gotta go catch fish, too, and we don't have enough for the orders right now. How do you make more if you don't take on more, I guess? I'm bullheaded enough, we're gonna keep trying it. Right now, no, I go to bed and I don't rest easy because I, I don't know what's around the corner. I'd be the first to admit, maybe I took on a few extra orders. To keep his business afloat, Jeff needs a consistent flow of fish flooding in and the sales streaming out. These are all gonna get boxed and iced here and loaded on the truck here in just a little bit. And then we gotta do a whole nother load for Thursday. And then we gotta load again on Friday. I feel the pressure when I get the orders to, to, to come through and, and to please them and get the stuff because if I don't do it, there's always somebody else waiting in line to try to take the business. Those fish should have been caught last night. You shouldn't have been leaving so early. Yeah, it was only what, seven o'clock after I'd been here for 12 hours? I wasn't listening again. Oh, here we go. That'll be Everett, wondering if we got fish for him yet. Sure is. Hello? And I suppose you're wanting to report on fish. I don't have a lot to report. <laughs> he, he doesn't like to say no. He says, well, we can do it. Sometimes I get stuck in here a little, a little more than I would like to be. Somebody's got to go keep catching fish, and that seems to be him. Jeff's client needs an outstanding order of 2,000 pounds of buffalo. I think in my mind that uh, I will fill it. Yeah, I'm taking a big risk at letting somebody down, but uh, We've been floating along this far. Let's, let's hope we can keep doing it. 40 or 50 boxes that we don't have. It's kind of overwhelming is what it is, but I guess that's, that's a good thing. With the Pepin fish market in ashes, Mike Johnson is rising to meet the challenge in front of him. To support his family, the longtime fisherman is now moonlighting on a third shift. Let it get up to speed, when it stops cycling, and you can push play. Working the nine to seven, 10 hour shift is uh, kind of a rough gig. But right, right now, I just this is what I have to do. Make sure the bills are still paid. You, if you want to set the current position at home, answer it no. So I hit that pump. Yep. When I'm working somewhere else, I mean, I gotta focus on my job. But uh, man, somewhere in the back of my mind, there's always a carp swimming.
For Mike, work is becoming an endless loop. Fishing in the morning, the factory at night. Been tough on the kids. Don't hardly see them. Time I get done fishing, try to catch a little nap. And then off to work. Seems like a long eight hours. I'm back up in the morning fishing again, so don't get a whole lot of sleep at night. Time to make the donuts. How many pounds of fish are commercially harvested each year in the state of Minnesota? How many pounds of fish are commercially harvested each year in the state of Minnesota? The answer is A. Each year, commercial fishermen in Minnesota pull three and a half million pounds of fish from over 5,000 lakes. Back at the market, Jeff and Ron are rushing to get shipments out the door before they can start working on the outstanding order of buffalo. We got to get all this stuff going. This is what slowed down our catching our own fish. We get so busy, we haven't had time to go out. Hopefully, we'll figure that out. There's not a fish in the cooler, so now we got to go figure out where we're going to get another load of fish for the order that I just took on. Got to keep hopping. We might as well load that van before we go anywhere. How's that, Tom? Yep. These are all headed towards Minneapolis. Thank God for all this paperwork. With an order to fill and the day slipping away, Jeff calls in a favor. We can use about 16,000. I mean, you can fish wide open on them buffalo if you want to. We'll bring up a few buffalo tonight, then. OK, sounds good. He's always telling me about how many fish he can catch. I'm not really sure what the odds are. I haven't seen him perform on his own, so I, I really don't know, but I, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Now, what are you going to do besides around? I'm getting sick of this. <laughs> I guess I'm going to go check them, them nets, uh, gill nets I got out. Ron's going to have to go one way. I'm going to have to go another. Um, we are definitely on a mission. We need buffalo. I got to go move these hoop nets that were put in the wrong spot, and we won't say who did it. OK, let's get out of here. Jeff and Ron are heading for separate fishing spots, 50 miles apart on the Mississippi. Well, it, it, it's nice to be yeah, out of the market for just a few hours at least in a day. One thing that would help is to have a, another one or two guys that could help, you know, full time. Take this just in case we catch a couple. Placed correctly, a hoop net is an effective tool. The ideal position is on a bank in a steady current. That's only a day and a half of setting, so good job of catfish. Poor Ron thinks that uh, I gotta start telling people no, and I, I, I probably will. Sometime, I can't promise that. <laughs> that don't look pretty. Down river, Ron must raise his gill nets. Well, I got a jug hooked on there somewhere. I just got to figure out where it's hooked and if I can get a hold of it. I don't know how I'm going to do this. That ain't going to work. And I hope I don't lose a gnat. I got to got to figure out what I got to do with it. That's my problem, and I ain't not exactly sure. Now, that ain't going to hook. Nope. I got to call Ron and see what he's if he's catching. Hello. What are we up to? Trying to get logs off of buoys. I got about a 45 foot tree. I don't care about a tree. We need buffalo. And uh, it's like, whenever he starts talking like that, it's like, oh, we're, we're in trouble. Are you serious? Change is not for everyone. While some might easily give in to the tide, others push back against the power of the wave. In Pepin, Wisconsin, fisherman Rick Johnson is fighting the current. Hopefully get some buffalo for Jeff today. Gave me a call kind of out of the blue, so just 
kind of out looking around, see what I can get for them. You know, with the market burning down, it was kind of a iffy situation for a while, but you know, I'm, hopefully this works out. You know, he takes some fish from me and keep on fishing. It's the right kind, anyways. Without the Pepin Market, fishermen in the upper Midwest are struggling to sell their catch. The market burning down has made it a little tougher to find a place to sell my fish, but I always will persevere, I think. I'll do whatever it takes. It's always just gonna be as much, as much fishing as I can do. My brother's gotta get a job and work a job. That's just what he's gotta do. Mike wants to go work for the man. The way I look at it, I am the man, because that's who I work for is myself. Oh, it's actually, there's a pretty full net right here at the end. You be smiling to the bank. Hopefully you don't get a storm. Can't be good all the time. Already running on empty from working overnight, Mike Johnson gets on the water with his 16-year-old son, Jimmy. Although I'm, I'm physically kind of tired, uh, I'm, uh, I've got a little adrenaline rush. I'm mentally ready to go because I'm, I'm doing what I love to do. So it always pumps me up enough to, to do what I've got to do. You got a few anyway. Yeah, just heard of it. Woo. Make sure you turn them heads up on them big suckers. I think the river calls to him as much as me. It's one of those things. Uh, he was brought up around the river and watching me work and work hard. And he's, he's taken to the river very well. I have to grab a hook out of there. There we go. A little stick for you. And a little rain shower. First one was fish and the second one's all sticks. There's really no comparison to, to putting 10 hours in in a factory to 10 hours on the water. Just wrecked another one. Son of a Yeah, I tried to pull it out of that web there on the fish. I don't even know if I show it really, but I, I know my heart feels it. Hands down deal that I love to fish more than anything. Another stick net instead of another fish net. to fill an outstanding order, Jeff and Ron have split up to find buffalo. If I can get right in between this seam of current, I'll get one more raise here. The fish finally seem to be where, uh, where I thought they might be, but now uh, these aren't the right kind of fish. If I can't fill this order, it's not making me look very good at all. I'm catfishing this one too, it looks like. I'm thinking that that wasn't a good decision to take on an extra order of buffalo. I sure hope Ron's catching some. 50 miles downriver, Ron is pulling in his gill net. There he is. Come on. What are you hooked on? You son of a OK. Just a lot of dirt, sticks, bark. This isn't really, I'm frustrated with the work. It's just that I would rather be out here doing this. Somewhere along the line, you gotta decide when, you know, how big you wanna get or what you wanna do, at least in my opinion. With no buffalo to show, Jeff baits the hoop nets and heads for home. Oh, sick. <laughs> I don't know how they think that tastes good, but it sure don't smell good. I'm getting extremely worried. It doesn't sound like Ron's got much, I don't have much. It's like, oh boy, it could be a bad deal for us. We're heading home. I guess it is what it is. You deal with everything as it comes. Doesn't do much good to rant and rave and yell about it. Back 
back on Lake Pepin. Mike and his son Jimmy are pulling in their gill nets. See, I might have to start pulling out sticks. You gotta get it. That there's just always work to be done, no matter what it does. You gotta stay after it. Oh, we don't get out of here. Jimmy seems pretty excited. It keeps a smile on his face. It keeps him going. It keeps him pulling a little harder. Knowing the catch is there and knowing he's making some money and it makes me really proud to see my son uh, just being happy like I'm happy when I'm on the river. Me and the kid here, we're making some money. He's smiling right now. He ain't got no time to smile because he's working. With spirits high, Mike and Jimmy move on to check another series of nets. Now I'll go up. I cannot believe in all my years that I, I got flipped out of the boat that easy. But it just goes to show you that, I mean, you got to watch every movement. It's really important to watch and focus. That little bit of fish slime on everything makes it slippery as hell. He's seen me going and then he goosed her a little more, I think. I guess as good as it's raining, this was about as good a day as any to fall in. That is going to be soaked either way. The worst days fishing are better than the best days in any factory or anywhere else I could be. The fish are running pretty good. It's a win-win deal for us right now. As long as I can keep stripping fish all day like this. And I am definitely soaked. I'd rather do it than punch a clock and, and be warm and make parts for somebody else. There you go, get him by the head up there. Roll. We have to crank up the old heater on the pickup today for the first time all summer. Woo. There's just way too much current. You ain't gonna catch no fish and it's gonna beat the nets up. Oh, some Commercial fishermen are all members of the same community. Although essentially competitors, when one man is in trouble, another will find a way to help. Here's a buffalo. Jeff Ritter needs to fill an outstanding order of buffalo. We're having trouble. And today, Rick Johnson is coming through. Jeff needs fish and he's a friend and he pays me decent for him. We might all be against each other on the fishing part, but I mean, most of us will help each other out. Not much. What are you up to? You did catch some, huh? Take a picture of you and hang it on the wall for Fisherman of the Week? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> a big sigh of relief. Um, kind of saved the day. I don't know if I need to tell him that 100%, but um, yeah, he kind of saved our ass. How did you stumble upon, I mean, did you actually capture these yourself or did you find them floating around in a net out there? <laughs> They look nice. I'll give you credit this time. From zero to hero, and that's what I am. It's nice to catch some fish. It's nice to help out Jeff. I wouldn't sell you junk, dude. This is the first time you come through in over two years. What, two years? I'm pulling my jaw on your fish for three months. No, I better not tease you, because we need them. For Jeff Ritter, treading this close to the edge is not sustainable. Hey, I was wondering, you know we're swamped, right? Yeah. Have you considered, are you coming down here to work? We're extremely short-handed and, and decent help's hard to find and Rick knows fish. I mean. I don't know, Jeff. You know, I just, I like fishing, Jeff. You know what I mean? Well, how come you call me when you ain't catching nothing said I ain't made no money in four weeks? I'm a fisherman, I'm not a fish gutter or a fish skinner. And that doesn't mean you can't fish. No, I like living the living the dream here, you know. I'm not a nine to five type of guy or eight to three or freaking nine to freaking midnight. It's a good offer. It might be something that I'm interested in down the road. That'll make make for a decent order. A little disappointed that Rick doesn't want to help out and maybe he doesn't want to 
fish full time down here, but I just have to keep finding what I can find for help. Give it to him. What's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that? I want that up the next time I come now. Identity is not an accident. Big and small, the choices we make shape who we are. With his day on the water ending, Mike Johnson is about to head back to the factory. I guess we probably got close to a ton of fish again today. It's one of those things, instant satisfaction of when you're catching fish and pulling fish in the boat. There's no pill to take to get rid of this uh, fish disease I've got. It's just not that easy. Yeah, every day, I mean, that kind of weighs pretty hard on me. So I really can't imagine my, my life without fishing in it, so. When you lose something you really love, the thought of it coming back to you is just, just phenomenal. And I've gotta, gotta go with my heart. I've gotta go with who I am. I think it was expected that I wouldn't stay here forever, so I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have to go be a fisherman. I suppose Jimmy will want to sleep in. Maybe I will too. I doubt it. 